All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back for a new session of the Quantum Global Public Goods Initiative uh, from the Quantum Computing Association. So today we are on our third week uh, of investigating topics related to quantum uh, or game theory, which we're going to help us uh, to ba basically focus on the implementation of a quantum global public goods game. Uh, today, we host Sarah, who's going to present us uh, on an introductory level, the variational quantum algorithms framework. Uh, the main idea for that is because we think that it might be relevant to talk about the quantum uh, classical hybrid algorithms and how they could relate to optimization of cost functions, because it is very likely that we will use these notions uh, into the, the idea of maximizing some kind of uh, uh, public good preservation. So uh, with, this, uh, with this note, so uh, I let Sarah present herself and uh, start the presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Sara. I'm a second year master's student at EPFL, physics department. And uh, as a member of this association, I'm, uh, I was invited by Arthur to study these uh, and investigate this uh, topic that was new for me, the variational quantum algorithms. And I'm here to present to you what I learned. I hope it's clear. Perfectly clear. So I'll start by sharing. Okay. So essentially, what are these variational quantum algorithms? So it's, uh, in a nutshell, it's a hybrid class of algorithms that take advantage of both quantum and classical algorithms for learning a set of parameters theta. So you might already guess that this is a very um, quantum Analog, a very natural quantum um, analog to, to the very well known um, and hopefully the very, I mean, the very famous um, quant uh, classical machine learning algorithms that are already around. So, this is in fact a very um, promising class of, um, of algorithms because, especially in the, the NISC era, so essentially because it's hybrid, this means that we make the most of our um, quantum computation to efficiently, um, as I'll get into detail uh, further in the presentation, um, to efficiently explore the space of configurations of a given system. And uh, when we make advantage of uh, the existing toolbox, classical toolbox for um, classical optimizers. Um, and to make things even better, uh, it's a very um, general, uh, generalizable a class of algorithms that we can apply to a very wide range of uh, problems and hopefully the one we're trying to solve. So uh, as the name indicates, it's inspired by the quantum mechanical variational method. And uh, this variational method is simply, uh, we take an ansatz, so a, a given a trial wave function um, that should depend in general of several parameters and we tune these parameters iteratively to minimize the expectation value of the energy. Of course, it can be energy, but uh, we can generalize this to other, uh, other target objective functions. So um, as you see, as I've mentioned before, these are hybrid algorithms. We have a quantum part and a classical part. But before we go there, we, we look we were studying an algorithm, so it's natural that we first look into the input. So we see that we can, in general, have a training set. We can also have, we, we have to have a, a given cost function that should somehow encode the, um, the information of the problem. And we need also an ansatz, which would be essentially a, a sequence of gates or a, a given circuit that will whose parameters will tune to basically minimize the cost function. And uh, later, uh, the output should depend uh, essentially on the task at hand. So the way we go about this is we, we have our, our uh, we begin with, uh, uh, for instance, in the, the vacuum state or any other uh, initial states. And we begin by um, evaluating, so basically, um, if, yes, evaluating our um, uh, quantum part of the algorithm, but given an initial set of these parameters. And uh, after the, the first iteration, 
we are we obtain some a given um, expression accreditation value, and we fit it to a a classical computer that should be in charge of um, basically navigating through the space of uh, the cost function, and to basically try to identify the the, um, the best way in which to uh, update the parameters. And we do this iteratively. So in each step, we basically, we optimize, um, we, we're going to uh, compute the, um, the, expectation, um, the expectation value of the cost function. And we're going to, in, with using the, the quantum, our quantum processor, and we're going to um, basically make the most of our already very efficient uh, classical optimizers. Um, to um, essentially update, optimize and update the variational uh, parameters. Just an observation. Uh, the way the, I mentioned before that this was uh, useful for the, the, NISC, uh, the NISC error in the sense that, and this is very clear here, and it's because essentially, because we're using um, a quantum algorithm and a classical algorithm that prevents us from having uh, quantum algorithms that are too, um, that have, a depth that is too high, and if you if um, and if we have if the depth is uh, too high, then it means that it's very susceptible to errors, which basically in endanger our the the whole feasibility of our quantum computation. Um, so essentially, um, I, I I'm going to highlight here the and the ansetze. So is, is essentially uh, we have we for for, a, for given a, a number of, of gates we basically we can define an um, a sequence of gates so an ansatz that basically we can this in, in this case I'm expressing it we can express it in general as um, a sequence of, of circuits that each depending on a set of parameters theta. Each of them can have um, can be represented by uh, other smaller circuits that essentially can uh, have both gates that uh, have fixed parameters that we call the uh, input states basically that are used for that, and other ones that actually uh, have this um, that are that are meant to be that depend on these uh, parameters theta that we need to tune according using the algorithm that I just explained, the general uh, framework that I explained. And um, there is a, a general uh, trade-off here, in fact, because we have to balance two things. First of all, we have to balance the ability to generate any state, because at the end of the day, we want the, um, the expectation, the minimum expectation that we obtain to only depend on our, um, basically our classical optimizer. So not dependent on our quantum state. So we want to be able to generate uh, any target state, uh, uh, ideally with our quantum um, our quantum processing part, and um, uh, also. But this may Im implicate a very high number of parameters to optimize because it's it's could mean that our um, circuits are really deep, or have and have a lot of parameters to to um, to optimize and uh, but in fact there is a way around this so for instance if we know um, some specific properties of the problem so if we can use we can leverage this knowledge to essentially minimize um, the um, to reduce the set of possible um, gates or circuits that we're going to um, to allow so essentially, we're reducing the, the set of possible parameters that we can um, take. Uh, and these are, are, these are called the problem-inspired ansatz. And there is a, a notorious uh, such example, which is a unitary coupled cluster ansatz, which, if I'm not mistaken, is specifically used for the variational quantum eigensolver. And, um, but Otherwise, we could also have generic, um, generic ansatz, generic um, circuits that uh, we can apply to several circuits. For instance, we have the hardware efficient uh, class, which basically 
takes advantage of the of the gates that basically are naturally basically takes uh, advantage of the natural properties of our of the quantum computer itself of the quantum hardware and then we have a quantum alternate and operator operator and that's that is uh, if not not mistaken um very what is generally used for solving combinatorial problems and then um, another so once we have our um, ansatz chosen then we have to solve um, our optimization so basically we have to uh, find a way to update our variational parameters with respect to the cost function and so we have um, this is a uh, something in the realm this is a very well uh, studied um, class of, of, uh, of algorithms and we have um, two general we, among others we have two general classes which is the graded descent so this is a very popular one so essentially what these um, what this does what these kind of optimizers do is they optimize each variational param so each parameter they're going to randomly vary um, vary in the and they up, they choose to update in the direction that yields the largest local um, change in in energy and um, I mean basically rather than doing this you can guess that this is very costly as the number of um, as the number of parameters grow so essentially we can also do something else which is um, the simultaneous perturbation stochastic approximation optimizer, which basically does the same, only instead of uh, doing, uh, basically, rather than randomly pertur perturbating um, every parameter independently, they do it all at once. And in fact, sometimes this converges a lot faster than the gradient descent. And it's specific, it's especially useful for uh, noisy uh, noisy um, objective functions, so in the presence of noise. And uh, so there's several applications of these kinds of uh, algorithms. So you have uh, quantum chemistry. Essentially, we have uh, the very famous variational quantum eigen solver. So essentially, we can go back to the variational um, method because it's a very natural it's the specific this, this specific one that I have in, in this picture. So essentially, we we know that our the, the energy of the system is going to depend depends on, on on several parameters, but one of them being the distance between the two molecules. And the variational method should uh, basically try to find this the combined um, wave function of these two uh, molecules that essentially should um, correspond to the, the lowest energy um, configuration. And essentially what, you, what, what we can do is we take our, uh, we have a specific, uh, we take a particular uh, trial function and we begin by applying it our ansatz. And uh, essentially we, the, the, cost, the, the function we're trying to minimize is the energy function. And so we apply our method until uh, for each distance, the energy converges to a minimum, and then we obtain a nice plot, and we can identify um, our our goal, our minimum energy, for instance. Also, we have uh, quantum classifiers, so it's already there's already been found a natural way of encoding, for instance, the um, the information about a pixel and its intensity. In, in, um, in a quantum state. And uh, also quantum in, in quantum finances, which is probably also one of the most famous ones, uh, and in particular op, uh, option pricing. So essentially, uh, this, this option pricing problem corresponds to basically assessing the value of, of an asset of, over time. And uh, there's been found a very clever way of, of um, basically avoiding doing uh, Monte Carlo simulations which is the, the classical way to go about it. And so instead of Monte Carlo, what we can do is, okay, let's try to first encode the, this, this corresponds to trajectories of the, basically the fluctuations of the value of the asset in time. 
And what you do is we encode the information about the value of the asset by you look um, by essentially to each of these um, each of these horizontal lines corresponds to a qubit. And if the value if the asset um, takes the value this present this value here in the intersection of uh, these um, these horizontal lines to this qubit, that means that that qubit is so to speak activated. And so the way we can encode it is simply zero zero one zero 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 zero, and then we want to in the end um, evaluate all possible trajectories, and so we can simply take the superposition of all these states. So there's already very interesting ways of um, transforming this classical information into quantum, uh, computer, uh, into quantum information and computing it in a in an efficient way by making use of uh, the quantum processing power, which I I, th I think I forgot to mention. I, I wrote in the slide um, the Solovay Kitaev uh, theorem, but essentially it's it's the um, here the advantage is in the way that quantum computing allows us to explore the configuration space of, of a system. So essentially we can with only only a, a polynomial number of gates, we can essentially approximate uh, any exponentially uh, any gate. And that's why we have this amazing tool here. But essentially that's it. I think we could discuss uh, this now. These are some uh, references. But uh, Arthur? Great. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah. So um, maybe uh, let's open the floor for maybe a few questions. Uh, yes. So let me uh, just put everyone uh, yeah, here. Yes. So any questions? Uh, sure, yeah, I'll ask a question. Yeah, of course. Uh, so this might uh, be relevant to that, that last theory you mentioned. But so when I think of where the advantage comes from, with a lot of these famous quantum algorithms, it's something like you get to try a lot of solutions at the same time with yes, yes. superpositions. Yeah. But so, so it seems like with these algorithms you're talking about, you still, you're feeding your quantum algorithm just one set of thetas at a time. Yeah. Exactly. So, so mm -hmm. where, where does the quantumness come in? The quantumness is uh, basically because we're going to evaluate it quantumly. So, the, okay. basically, so, get to uh, so essentially, uh, the computational cost of doing this classically by each, by essentially adding each uh, particle to the system, for instance, it would increase it exponentially. Whereas with, um, with quantum uh, information, we can just, uh, by adding one qubit, we can increase um, exponentially the, the configuration space. And we do this efficiently, the way to, to efficiently evaluate it is by using quantum computers, because we can efficiently um, access any state very in, with, with just a, a polynomial number of, uh, of gates. Okay. But, but uh, if, if uh, anyone has... Yeah. Any, so yeah, maybe I, I, one thing I want to add, uh, so if yeah. I understood the question, uh, Joey, is that uh, you, you, when you, you speak about superpositions, uh, just uh, when you want to superpose all the possible states, right? So this is the initial strategy, but, uh, and then in the end, you want to retrieve the final answer, right? You, you do not want to sample out all the strategies because what you want to find is the right that will lead you to your result. In this case, for example, you would try to minimize your cost function. So you would like to find the state, the combination that minimizes your cost function. The thing is, uh, of course, we never, can measure any superposition states, right? When, when sure. we do the measurement, we make the, the collapse every time. Because if we hadn't this collapse, then we would be done. Like quantum computing would be super easy. We would have like just to experiment all the solutions at once and we it would uh, do that in no time. But since we have the measurement operations, what usually happens is what we call the coherent algorithm, which use the fact that you can indeed superpose all the solutions, but then you apply some kind of gates, which will uh, greatly improve the probability of measuring the, the thing you, sure, you want sure, to, sure, yeah. uh, to identify. In this case, it's a bit different because now the, it, it, it's kind of the same in the idea that we rely on the variational principle. So one thing maybe that, that would have been uh, interesting to add is the fact that variational principle stands on the, uh, on the fact that usually when you try uh, this class of algorithms, you try to encode your, prob uh, your problem into a Hamiltonian. 
essentially, or a, a Gauss function, which is in a Hamiltonian, and you want to find the ground state of the Hamiltonian. So there is a, 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 a selection step when you have to, let's say you have an optimization problem of your, of your choice, a finance problem or a chemistry problem, and you map this to a, a cost Hamiltonian, which is an operator, right, in the, in, in the quantum space. And then your solution will be what? It will be encoded into the ground state. So it, the, the ground state is the, because you, you apply the eigenvalue, the ground state is the, sorry, is the state that has the lowest eigenvalue of your operator. So you know it's going to be the one that minimizes the cost function you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. And so if you manage to efficiently translate this cost function to a Hamiltonian, you won. Because now all you have to do is identify this ground state. And now comes the idea of the variational principle, which says basically, Every time you try to parameterize a quantum circuit, so by quantum circuit, what do we mean? We are actually creating a quantum state, an arbitrary quantum state, which is a uh, dependent of a parameter, a set of parameters theta, right? And so your quantum circuits just helps you to, if I look, for example, here into the uh, into the slide that uh, Sarah has displayed, you have this row k here. Uh, this this row k uh, just tells you that you're indeed building a quantum state. Uh, mm -hmm. And you don't know what's happening. Like uh, you, you know that you build some ansatz, uh, you have a set of gates, but you don't know what kind of state you have. But what you want to do is say, well, if I can tune up my classical parameters in a way that this circuit will eventually yield the, uh, the, the state that will get me as close as possible to the ground state, then I will have one. And I know that this is possible because I know that the ground state, uh, all, all the possible states uh, that I can find, their uh, expectation value is always greater than the value of the ground state, uh, the energy eigenstate, sorry, the, the, sure. the, the energy of the ground state. And so this is on the, on the foundation that you can try to find an optimization landscape. So if you go back to the curve you showed before, you have this optimization landscape when you try to basically reach out the, the lowest point into the, in, into the, the loop, right, of, the, of this landscape. But to do that, you have to know that, of course, this space exists. So uh, the variational pro principle says that if indeed, the, the ground state is the minimal energy, and you cannot ever find a quantum state that, uh, that, that, that has an expectation value of the operator that goes below that. So this is our, um, our constraint, if you want, uh, uh, in this case. And so why do we... Uh, so, so the quantumness comes in to finally answer the question. Here, the quantumness goes to the fact that you're, again, applying a superposition of quantum states. Uh, the, the same, you could, uh, you could go into a bunch of Hadamard, but now the selection, instead of being uh, added with a very smart quantum protocol within the circuit, you're actually creating with a classical feedback loop, this kind of, uh, uh, of uh, interference pattern. So you don't know what's happening really in the quantum circuit. You just know that there is a set of parameters that will uh, increase the effects of getting the ground state that you, yeah, that you want. So it just, uh, uh, if you think about Scholes algorithm, for example, or Grover, those are the guys that say, well, uh, Essentially, what you're looking for is, okay, I want to maximize the amplitude or the probability of measuring my, bit, my solution bit string. And in the variational quantum algorithm, so, okay, I have no idea of what I have to do, to, what, what operations I have to apply to my state to release this, uh, the, the, to, to improve this amplitude. So I will do through classical optimization to do this. Uh, but, but the superposition is always happening inside a quantum system, but you just don't know where uh, where to navigate in this case. And so this is a broader class of algorithm that tells you, well, I will take advantage of the fact that uh, I minimize the number of steps, uh, the, number, the circuit depths I have to, to go through because I have a, a noise problem, the coherence of the qubits and so forth. So I don't want to make like too long algorithms. Uh, I want to make short algorithms. And once I, I know that, I want to, to know if uh, with this computation, with this subspace of uh, applying unitaries, I have another degree of freedom, which is the, para the, the, the gates I, I'm employing essentially. So you're, you're, instead of increasing your depth and, uh, uh, and this degree of freedom, where you can extend indefinitely the number of, uh, of gates you want to pursue, you're actually focusing on one, one block, which says, okay, I want to optimize the parameters that will help me get as close as possible to the, to the ground state, which I'm going to be measuring at the end. Uh, if it's encoded, by the way, on the uh, on one of the solutions of the computational subspace, and th there is, uh, I really like the figure you you, you took, by the way. Uh, if you go back to the the thing before, because here, and this goes back to, uh, so maybe I will stop here because I think I've answered the question. So if there are other questions, uh, no, let, let's uh, save it. Thank you very yeah. much. Very nice explanation. I, I have a, a basic question, and this might just be down to a lack of fundamental understanding, but. As I understand it, you, you want to be able to optimize the problem or get some solution by, by using this uh, trial function for which you want to minimize the energy state, right? Um, but then is, the, is the objective in the... Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. 
I mean, did, was that was that wrong or? No, no. Uh, can you continue? Yeah. So my my question is: at the end, do you want to, for example, if you're if you're trying to optimize a set of parameters or something, mm -hmm. is the objective to use this uh, energy state with the trial function and minimize that, and then somehow obtain the parameters in the non-quantum state again, or did I did I misunderstand something there? So, uh, so what you say is to so essentially, we in the cost function, it should already encode already the, the information of, of the system. Mm -hmm. So the true the true solution, I mean, the, the true information of the system should be already there. Um, so I'm sorry, I didn't really understand. So for for example, in, in the case of option pricing, as I understand it, what we all do you want uh, option pricing? Uh, yeah, I mean, this was just to the option pricing. Uh, Part, but essentially, they and you want to be able to uh, basically you have to uh, assess some kind of payoff function uh, that should tell you basically uh, how much money I guess uh, you, you yeah getting. exactly but the uh, so so the, um, to yeah just sorry just to, just to clarify because I don't know if I, I was clear with my question. In the case of option pricing, your output, you just want the price of the option, right? That That is your so-called cost function. Mm -hmm. But what if you have a cost function where you're trying to optimize a set of parameters so that you can use that set of parameters to compute also something else? Compute something else? Exactly. Where your objective is not to get the value of the cost function. You just want to minimize the cost function. And you want the parameters that give you that minimized cost function so that you can apply it to apply something to else. other problems. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm thinking of like a, just a neural. It is in, it is uh, a little bit the same as um, a classical um, machine learning, I suppose, because in the end, this, this is also um, a, a black box that doesn't really matter what you have there. You just want the right parameters, just to to assess it efficiently, I suppose. But uh, okay, okay. So you, yeah, you, you were mentioning the example of neural networks. So you, what, what you're mm -hmm. talking about is this a kind of a functional analysis in a way, like you, you want to optimize a functional and not so much uh, what, 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 because at the end, what, the, what this algorithm do is like optimizing a set of parameters that will fully characterize your circuit, right? So uh, uh, when, mm -hmm. when you want to evaluate your cost function, uh, so I, I, I wanted to know more what, what you had in mind with the neural network was exa what exactly like evaluating the role of a layer or how, how, uh, how well no because what, what I was getting at is that you can you can uh, use the, the ansatz right which was the input state and mm -hmm. then you have you have this optimization process that happens with the, the SPSA I think mm -hmm. I think it was called I don't mm -hmm. remember the full the full, full name for it but mm -hmm. um, and then you get some output which uh, basically is like a minimization of your objective right yes but the point of minimizing that objective is so that you have a, a system or a network yeah. which is able to predict other things so that's, so that's right. my confusion yes. it's like yeah. transitioning between the optimization that you obtain through this quantum mm -hmm. process and then being able to apply it in other contexts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in fact the, the the thing that you retrieve from the quantum computer is not the value of the cost function it's mm -hmm. actually what you retrieve is as, uh, uh, as you said, a state, uh, basically one of, the, one of the computational basis states. So you do not get all the quantum states for the, uh, the, the what I was specifying before is that you can, you can never measure a superposition of quantum states, what we call computational basis states, which amounts you know, to classical bit states uh, uh, where you have a classical bit strings. And what you sample out from the quantum computer is the, uh, are those elementary states, right? And then from those, yeah, there exist techniques where you can rebuild a quantum state, which are called tomography, but uh, let, let's forget about that for a second. But then once you retrieve this state or this potential reconstructed state, what you want to do is actually compute the value of this cost function of this state. And mm -hmm. wh wh what you feed essentially to the, uh, to the SPSA algorithm or any classical optimization loop is you feed in the, the value uh, of the cost function based on the parameters which created this final state that you retrieve from the quantum computer. But the okay. evaluation goes afterwards uh, after that you uh, actually implemented the circuit. So you, you, the, the idea, if you will, the, the, circ, uh, the circuit, um, the production of the quantum state, just produce an idea of, okay, what, what state should you try to minimize your cost function? 
And each time you, you okay, you, I, I sample a quantum state. I say, okay, um, so I, I have a set of parameters that allow me to generate this state. I, optimize, I measure my cost function, okay? Let's say uh, I have a cost function that will yields me 10 on this, uh, uh, on, on this trial. Okay, I can, do, I can do better. So my classical optimization will say, okay, now try with this new set of parameters. I obtain another bit string. Ah, okay, but now with this bit string, I measure my cost function and I get a cost function of nine. So I did better. And you go mm -hmm. so forth and so forth until you reach the better bit string in this case. Okay, okay. But right. uh, yeah. So, so, so this should be clarified because indeed it's important even for our project uh, to understand what we are measuring because mm -hmm. what we are measuring is not the cost function itself. We actually have to evaluate the cost function based on the output of the quantum computer. Exactly. So this is really okay. critical uh, because if we, do not, if we do not get that, this means, because, uh, this means that in our case, for example, uh, so maybe uh, there are the questions before we move to the glo global public goods part, because we, we, we raised the central questions that might be, that will be really helpful, I think, in the, in the process, but maybe let, let's stand on questions if there are any more. If not, okay, cool. So that, uh, now I come to um, the, the point here. So can you go back to the first slide? Um, uh, I think, yes, uh, it was this one, sorry, uh, not the first one, it was the, not the, yeah, this one exactly. So mm -hmm. here, what, what's really interesting with this slide is understanding like this figure on the let, lets us understand what kind of possible inputs and outputs we could uh, we could feed to this uh, to do to this scheme, right? And uh, there, yeah, go ahead. You only had a mention. Um, I remember from your presentation from the public goods, mm -hmm. uh, you already had some kind of idea of what this cost function should be. Yeah. So uh, the okay. So w w what we think about uh, in the terms of cost function. Uh, so we, we we have to define it in details. But what I had in mind is, in the framework of game theory, what you want to uh, pursue is making sure that the amount, the value of the public good that has to be preserved, is being kept as high as possible. In this case, so you uh, translate it differently. If, if we if we speak of minimization, you want to minimize the loss of the public goods that will be consumed after that the uh, countries, let's say, uh, will decide to not preserve the good after having chosen a strategy. So th this is the idea. So the cost function should be, uh, so be because we, we assume that, so this is gonna be our input once we, w once we focus on the quantum part, what we have to work beforehand is uh, what uh, Ahmed introduced to us last week is the payoff matrix, mm -hmm. which is what? Which is, okay, Say my uh, my state A or my state B take a set of decisions. Uh, in the classical case, it will be either I cooperate or I defect. Mm -hmm. And based on the choice of the two, we have a different outputs for each of the players. And so this builds what we call a payoff matrix, where uh, we store in each of the rows and columns the value that will be retrieved or the amount of public goods that will be lost in this case. Mm -hmm. So this is one we, what we want to model. Okay, great. So now now that we want we know that we have that. So what do we aim to do? So of course, what we aim to do is minimize the loss of the public good mm -hmm. while keeping sh making sure that the payoff, the individual payoff of each country with this decision will be as high as possible, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so the, 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 there are two kind of terms. Uh, so what I was uh, thinking originally might be like, uh, okay, we want to ensure a symmetry of effort, right? We want to make sure that uh, uh, globally, everyone uh, will be committing to the same amount proportional to their, uh, to, to, to their potential uh, abilities. Mm -hmm. And so you want to minimize the standard deviation of uh, the payoff, uh, the, the global payoff, which would be the sum of the payoffs in this case. Uh, imagine that you have a, mm -hmm. a vector of payoffs corresponding to each country, uh, corresponding to one set of decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to minimize this standard deviation but at the same time, you want to maximize the, the full cost function, right? You want to, uh, sorry, you, you want to minimize the full loss. So what you, what you want to do is like uh, uh, the cost function I had in mind is the you, you, you take the, I think it was the L1, L1 norm. Uh, okay. So the, the sum of the contributions minus, uh, minus the standard deviation in the sense that, okay, I want to make sure that my country is coming themselves as much as possible in the symmetric way. And mm -hmm. at the same time, we, we, keep go, we keep maintaining the same level of public good. We, we, we keep uh, fixing ourselves to lower the public good as, uh, as much as possible. So this would be the payoff, right? But now that we have this cost function, so first of all, we think about this class of algorithms, mm -hmm. we would have to think about an Hamiltonian encoding this problem, right? Because the, uh, if we think about, so and basically, uh, I wanted to ask you the following. Did you investigate uh, the QAOA, the quantum alternate uh, operator NSATs? 
Do you know where, because I know the only the quantum approximate optimization algorithm, but I do not know about its extension. So I was wondering if you, uh, if you took it, took a look at uh, on this. I, I didn't, uh, but maybe it could be interesting. Yeah. So because I, what I think is, uh, as you mentioned, there are two kinds of NSATs, ones which are problem agnostic and the other which are not. Mm -hmm. In our case, I don't think we will deal with the hardware constraints in the sense that we'll think that we have uh, perfect quantum computers in this case. But um, now, yeah. We already want to, uh, there's, um, I mean, as you described the problem, there's already some kind of, um, I think maybe properties that we can encode, use to limit um, our class of uh, gates, for instance, you're saying that you want things to be symmetric. Maybe, mm -hmm. uh, the, maybe that could already be uh, a constraint in the gates that we choose for the. Sure. You're right, but 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 but, but then in terms of the, the form of the circuit, in our case, mm -hmm. we, we want to so from what, what I had in mind. But again, it can be changed. But uh, uh, from what we, we want to make sure that the protocol is the same uh, for all uh, all the parties, right? So. Mm -hmm. The idea was to like you give them one qubits or ma many qubits per uh, per countries. Mm -hmm. You say you say okay now I, I want to create value by creating entanglement between those qubits, mm -hmm. right? Because the interest uh, for, for but basically I, I, I say this because we mentioned this last time. But the advantage of having quantum brought into this game is that now the decisions of every parties will be correlated with one another. So the results, mm -hmm. the payoff will be correlated with one another. Uh, and so we can, re we can hope to reach new kind of situ configurations, uh, stable co configurations, because we have like prior commitments going with this uh, entanglement resource. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting in the sense that now we, want, we, we have to assess what kind of entanglement do we want? Do we want a symmetric entanglement? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say no, in the sense that we want to create a symmetry of effort but that does not mean that we want a symmetry of uh, of uh, amounts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, let's take the United States versus uh, France, for example. Mm -hmm. you, you see, in the amount of public good that will be lost, so like, if we think about carbon emissions in this case, we know that it will take a lot more for the US to reduce by 30% the carbon emissions. It will take much more investment, much more, uh, much more effort than uh, the French, uh, we, which are, is a smaller country, which uh, admits less, etc., it would take uh, it would take much less amount for them to commit. So who should commit first, right? Uh, basically, US is providing is perturbing more uh, in, in the sense of uh, of absolute uh, quantity. So we should make sure that the US commit more in terms of reserving the public good than the, the, the French ones. But and that's so you have this cost yeah. function, no? I mean, that's maybe more easily. Everything that's more easily uh, encodable in the cost function, I'd say. But it, I, I, yes, but I, I think it, it has to be encoded in some way into the entanglement process, mm -hmm. right? Because if we th if we create, let's say we want to create symmetric entanglement. No, so I this mean, means- it, yeah, yeah, it should mean that we probably need to increase the degree of entanglement between the United States and the- That's right, exactly. So that means that the decision that the US takes should not affect as much the decisions of the other parties mm -hmm. Than the, 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 the other way around, right? Because the, the weight of the United States in the balance is too important uh, to, in the decisions. But because if the US does not, let's say, okay, the US or the Chinese, I don't know, like a, a really big, uh, a big country do not want to commit, the contributions of all the others compared to the amount of payoff that, uh, public good that has to be preserved is neglected. But so maybe, we will, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe it's a stupid idea, but maybe we can, or very naive, we could just, um... Maybe one of the parameters could be precisely, um, maybe the, the um, basically there's many kinds of uh, ansatz and one kind of ansatz is specifically uh, one that is uh, based on pattern repetition. Mm -hmm. And so basically we could have, um, and it basically consists of, you have uh, first a series of uh, gates that could just be, for instance, just unitary, um, just um, single qubit rotations. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, C not gates. So basically, you apply you, you entangle uh, entanglement gates, entangle using gates. And um, each of each, um, and you can repeat this pattern a given number of times. And um, for each of these um, gates, in each individual pattern, you're going to have um, coefficients. So different coefficients, not necessarily the same ones. You don't necessarily repeat the same gates. Um, and maybe it could be interesting to see if, if that is in, indeed the case, we could just uh, create something of the sort, but we reduce uh, or we fix maybe the, 
then we can literally see that um, just one way uh, control the number, the, the depth of the sequence. So by essentially we can fix all of these factors into basically this is just going to create an, a secret in which some um, just some cells are going to be more, some cubes are going to be more entangled to others just because mm -hmm. of this. Exactly. So we, we would like to parameterize the entanglement, right? Yeah. In a way. Maybe so, I'm so, not being very. Uh, no, no, but I, 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 I see that you, from what mm -hmm. I understood, is like you want to like separate the efforts of optimization depending on uh, mm -hmm. hyper parameters in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, it, this is good, but I think it comes on a second level. First, we have to establish the circuit that we want to use and the mm -hmm. problem encoding, right? We have two problems here, which are on, uh, on its own. Yes. Is this, oh. if we rely on, the, on a, hybrid, uh, a VQA, essentially, mm -hmm. if we rely on this idea, uh, we have to find a ground for some kind of minim uh, ensuring that there, there is a minimiz uh, minimization landscape. So this amounts in what I, what I know from the theory is that we can encode the problem into a Hamiltonian essentially. Mm -hmm. And if we manage to do that, we are we are winning. But at the same time, we want to encode in the end that's the constraints mm -hmm. of the solutions that we might have because what we want to do is ensure entanglement between the parties. And mm -hmm. so the, all, uh, the, this will restrict the set of parameters because otherwise what I could do is the, the, yes. the naive way and saying, ah, well, uh, produce uh, one entangling gate and then arbitrary rotations for everyone. And I, I just optimize my set of parameters. Mm -hmm. Then we remove the constraints which are related to cost function. This is a brute force optimization of the gates, which uh, will be evaluated beforehand, but we do not take into account the a, a, any power of the entanglement between, uh, between the parties. It could be, it could be okay, like everyone commits, uh, depending on the cost function, everyone commits and uh, okay, we preserve the public good, so it's okay. And so we, 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 we want to find some kind of uh, situa new situations, if I may say, new equilibrium situation mm -hmm. where we have, uh, we have optimized, uh, lo local optimized in a way. In a way. Mm -hmm. So the way I was thinking this is maybe could we think about the entangling gates themselves to be parameterized by, uh, uh, by classical parameters in a way that we, we can identify if yes or no entangling uh, yes. a, 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 the parameters of entanglement. So th this would amount in a series of gates, right? Mm -hmm. These parameters would amount to, okay, minimize the cost function that will be well established in the beginning, we, which would say, yes, we have to, uh, to make the contribution of the United States uh, like much more greater than the one of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the other party, for example. So we have to, I think you're right that we have to encode in our Hamiltonians or our, uh, 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 yeah. cost function encoding those mm -hmm. kind of constraints. And then the parameters, the, the set of parameters will tell us, and, and this will be an, uh, a theoretical analysis afterwards. Mm -hmm. Once we find uh, our optimus, okay, what kind of entanglement was needed to mm -hmm. ensure? Uh, so this could be a, a subject of research of its own, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we start with a, a naive approach of uh, um, optimization. And then we say, okay, now let's investigate what kind of quantum gates mm -hmm. are we observing with this optimization process? What, what, what the optimal solutions tells us? What kind of entanglement should we reach? And there maybe there are dots that could be connected between the theory of entanglement, okay? Like what kind of uh, correlations do I, have I created in a, in a, uh, in, yeah, in a, in a real perspective mm -hmm. versus, okay, what, what was needed to optimize the cost function? So uh, I think th this would be a research of its own, but now uh, for, for the next few weeks, uh, so of course we have to, for, still to introduce the, the formal problem, right? Uh, but we have to think about the encoding this cost function into a Hamiltonian. I think this would be the, 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 the greatest difficulty is to choose a, an instance of the game where we have, I, I would think like three, maybe three or four uh, parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would choose, okay, a, a, an encoding of the solution, uh, not no, sorry, an encoding of the cost function. So the, the, the thing to be, minimized in this case, mm -hmm. and see if we can map it to a Hamiltonian. So a, a cubo, essentially. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it might be, but uh, uh, for, from what I know from the theory, it might be uh, addressable, but mm -hmm. we, we have to work on that. So can I, can I just clarify something? Yeah, sure. So, so, so if I'm understanding you correctly, then the, the degree of entanglement uh, between these, these parties is, is something like the proportional uh, contribution to, to this, this public good. So, right. so that seems more like something, you know, incidental maybe of interest 
after you have the solution rather than than the solution itself right like like if i'm the the united states trying to figure out how to i don't know best reduce carbon emissions in the world right i i, I feel like what what i'm looking for is something is a uh, is uh, a percentage to cut back relative to myself right like i want to say okay i okay, my solution is to be 50% of, or 150% of whatever France is doing and 180% of Spain and like all these other countries, right? Like, like I, I feel like the core of the, the solution per se is, is these uh, parameters that are individual to, to the country. And then this sort of web of connection is maybe of additional interest, but, but not the solution per se. Is, is that, Yes, is that fair? So exactly, because now we face all, uh, so there are two things that you mentioned uh, which are absolutely correct. The first one is that uh, we encounter a constraint of reality, if I may say, like uh, in the sense of, okay, like we would actually give them a qubit, you know, and then you want, of course, to let the, the country give the, its own decisions, right, based on its, uh, its own interest. Like, let's say he knows the, uh, he, he doesn't know the decisions of the others, but he knows his potential payoff uh, related to, to all the decisions. So, and, and we should go back to Ahmed's presentation last week for to understand, okay, how, we, uh, how you take those kind of decisions. Uh, and basically what, I, what is encoded into the problem is that the, the strategy that each country adopts is, in, uh, is the unitary operation inside the quantum circuit. You, you see that a local unitary operation on its own qubits. So that means that you have this constraint where you want to, okay, you, you want to leave some space to some kind of arbitrary freedom, which might not be, uh, or we have to decide if it will be uh, related to uh, a parameters to be optimized in this case, but those parameters would not be at reach for the circuit itself, or, 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 or maybe, yes, the, the, proof of, uh, uh, the proof of concept would be, okay, let us decide everything and we can tell you that there exists a better solution for everyone, so which, is, which, is, which would be a nice proof of concept uh, in the beginning. But there is also, yes, the degree of entanglement, again, this proportional between the United States and other countries and so forth, this has to be encoded prior hand for the carbon emissions reduction into the cost function, because we know that so on an absolute reach, the contribution to global warming to, from one country is better than the other. So this has to be taken into account in the beginning. Uh, of the of the encoding, right? And then we find that the appropriate amount of commitment based on this reality, if I may say, of once we acknowledge this reality and uh, the decisions of the country. So we're, which is another kind of parameters in this case. But, the, the, uh, but, but I kind of think that this, uh, the, this set of parameters should be uh, a, a constraint and not a, a parameters to be optimized for. Okay, right? okay, okay. Yeah, so the so, degree of entanglement is, is baked into the problem. Exactly. Okay. Right. Exactly. And I then understand. we leave the freedom of the country. So we, we have an optimization of the constraints that some parameters are fixed because we, we attribute a strategy for our simulation. We attribute a single strategy for each of the countries. So each of the unitaries should, uh, should embed a, a, a core need that we would choose, of course, for the sake of simulation. But in the end, th th there is a w w one, uh, one freedom that is removed. And we have to figure out what kind of entanglement is needed to countermeasure the kind of decisions that might occur. And then we can make some statistics on the, uh, on, okay, based on who takes what decisions, what kind of entanglement is needed and so forth and so forth. And so we can make interesting measures on quantum information theory or regarding what we learned in the first week with, uh, with Fabio and, uh, and Aman regarding, uh, yeah, the amount of entanglement that is needed, like the, me the measures and, and, and some analysis on, on that point. And I think that with that, we have a, a global overview of what we could definitely hope to reach. Uh, I mean, on a, on a super research project uh, for, uh, for our own implementation. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so again, I think this was really helpful this week because we really identified what kind of the, are the bottlenecks that we have to figure out. And I think one critical uh, bottleneck is to make this cubo formulation. It's to, mm -hmm. uh, it's to make sure that we are able to encode the cost function. So first of all, we have to mm -hmm. agree on the cost function, but okay, let, let, let's say we would put a, an arbitrary one, right? But once we chose it, we have to make sure that we can encode it into a cubo. 
Uh, and so I think, uh, so the guys from example, for, uh, to, from D-Wave or, uh, or any other quantum software solutions company tries to do that, right? For all, all, all the people, the banks, the, the, um, the parties that come to these, these companies and say, okay, I have an optimization problem of my own, please <laughs> plug it into a quantum computer. But first there is this encoding step that we have to do as well for this problem. And then say, okay, like once we, we have this encoding ready, uh, let's choose one of the NZs that uh, Sarah presented, for example, or another one, uh, uh, we don't care, and put other constraints. Um, maybe modify it in a way that, okay, we, we, we shall see if the, class, the classical optimization scheme will adapt eventually because we, 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 we fix another kind of layer. Um, and, and, and then we could, yeah, we, we could propose a single NZ based on entanglement that will be itself proposed from the parameters that we choose to optimize. And what I'm interested in basically is like relating this to the entanglement theory. So based on what we will have produced as entanglement, we will, show, we will see if the better solution was to entangle everyone as much as possible, or if it was an, uh, an asymmetrical entanglement in this case uh, between all the parties. Like maybe, uh, I don't know, in, in the hypothesis, if we have four parties, maybe the better solution is to exclude from the entanglement one of the parties and the three others to, uh, to, to, to go do other things, uh, depending on, the, on where it stands in, in the scale of uh, contribution. And so, yeah, the, the, those might provide uh, interesting perspectives regarding to understanding of entanglement itself, right? Uh, how, how much it values for creating these kind of uh, applications. Great. I think, uh, yeah, I think it was a great discussion. Uh, and it's really good that we recorded this because it will be of help in the following weeks. Uh, any other questions, suggestions? Uh, because we, we did one full hour. So it's uh, in, in, now is a good time, I think, to, to stop. But if you have a question or suggestions before we close up. No. Okay. Either it was perfectly clear, uh, either it was perfectly confusing. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes in the in the next few weeks. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, Sarah, for the presentation. Uh, it was really cool and amazing. And so, as you said, like really self-contained, so it was really appreciable. Um, I'm sure we can uh, find a way to maybe come back in due time to notions, yes. specific notions of. Uh, uh, we, we, depending on what we might want to choose in this presentation. But again, what, what I'm really interesting uh, and we could consider it for next time uh, mm -hmm. is investigating what kind of output also. This is something we did not discuss here, mm -hmm. but what kind of output will we retrieve in our, uh, in our problem, right? Mm -hmm. Because what we would like to have is a strategy for each player. Mm -hmm. And does this strategy should come like a yes or no? Or should this come as a superposition, a mixed strategy with a probability of uh, choosing a, a strategy? We have to think about that, right? And depending on what we mm -hmm. hope to find, we have to think about the output. So maybe performing tomography, uh, tomography scheme on top of the uh, of, of the variational optimization, performing a, I don't know um, a gate sequence or something like this. So mm -hmm. we we also have to think about this as well. Uh, but we'll come back to it, of course, when I present the paper of uh, on quantum global public goods. I think Alex uh, will be the one presenting it mostly, uh, but I will definitely uh, be in the loop for that as well. Okay. Cool. Any anything you wanted to add? To add or no, no, no. Uh, I think it's uh, really interesting, actually. Uh, yeah. I really would like to discuss this with you. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, the, those sessions are made for this. And, uh, and of course, once we finished up uh, uploading all those presentations, we mm -hmm. will uh, fully focus on the discussions. Uh, so the, 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 those hours will not be uh, focused on presenting and then discussing. This will be full discussion, uh, recorded or not, we'll see, uh, depending on the, on, on the schedule and the mm -hmm. uh, on the length of the, the discussions, mm -hmm. but the, the, the goal of the pro this project is to efficiently manage to do this. So once we have all the tools for everyone to understand what we are dealing with, uh, by the way, so uh, Joey and, um, and Maximo, I think that this is the first time you attended. Uh, so okay, let, let me maybe just before asking this question, um, uh, I will stop the recording. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. As always, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to quantum at dpfl.ch. Uh, and see you next week for the next presentation. Thank you.